Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night, women's basketball goes all the way to the Big Ten Tournament Finals. And IU softball dominates in their home opener. This is Hoosier Sports Night. <sighs> Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Lauren Boer. And I'm Christian Oates. Christian, hasn't the weather been nice recently? It has been fantastic. No more coats, wearing shorts. It is not Gloomington, Indiana. It is Bloomington, Indiana. The Indiana women's basketball team made it to the Big Ten Tournament Finals after upsetting Maryland and Ohio State. The Hoosiers faced off against Iowa for the third time this season, and our beat reporters Brett Smith and Audrey Hausberger have the recap from Indianapolis. The Iowa Hawkeyes beat Indiana women's basketball for the third time this season, but this time in the Big Ten Championship game. I can tell you this, you know, my staff, um, we're all very, very proud uh, of what we've been able to do here uh, the last four days in Indianapolis. And uh, we had every reason to come to Indy and, uh, you know, fold and, and not, uh, you know, be who we are and who we know we are. Uh, but uh, we looked at it as a new season. All three of their matchups, the Hoosiers have stifled Iowa's leading scorer, Caitlin Clark, just about as much as she can be stifled. But the issue with guarding center Monica Sinano was still an issue. I thought this one right here, um, Nick, she did a tremendous job on Kate Clark today. You know, I think she, she held her at bay. I think she made her uncomfortable uh, for most of the 40 minutes. But uh, we had no answer for Sinano. All of the Hoosiers' matchups with the Hawkeyes have been post Mackenzie Holmes' injury, affecting her ability to guard a player like Sinano. But Terry Morin feels this will only help Mackenzie Holmes in the NCAA tournament. Being here for these four days was really good for Mackenzie. You can see out there today, you know, we can only play her for about two minutes, two minutes, 30 seconds. Sometimes we let her go too long, and, and that's never good. She's, she's certainly working herself back in shape, uh, you know, trying to build her endurance. Despite the Hoosier heartbreak, Morn and her team refused to fall to adversity, and she says they will take one, maybe two days to regroup, and then it's back to work. You know, obviously they're disappointed, but we're never going to be discouraged um, because, as I mentioned, you know, we, I know this, that they're one of the best teams in the country. Iowa wins the Big Ten Championship 74-67. to For Iowa CD Sports, Audrey Hausberger and Brett Smith. With an impressive Big Ten tournament run, the women's basketball team is projected to host two games in the NCAA tournament. The seeds will be announced this Sunday, so be sure to follow Brett Smith and Audrey Hausberger for more updates. The Indiana men's basketball team starts Big Ten conference play today. Our Evan Kimiko has the preview. After ending the regular season with a loss to Purdue, Indiana now turns to postseason play and a date with the Michigan Wolverines. We did nothing right in that game. I mean, on both ends of the floor, our defensive coverages were, were awful. And we was just... It was one of those games where I just thought we didn't come, come, we didn't show up to play, and they took advantage of it. The Hoosiers have faced this Michigan team already, losing 80 to 62 at Assembly Hall in January. A big thing for us, um, I think our ball screen defense wasn't very well in that game, um, and then our beers weren't really, really well. So basically, when they came off the screens, um, it, our guards get hit. We're supposed to switch, and we didn't switch, so it let them have wide open shots and he was hitting them. Well, if Indiana has any shot at getting the upset win against Michigan, the Hoosiers defense has got to find ways to stop Michigan star Hunter Dickinson after a 25 point performance the last time these two teams faced off. Not only that, but IU needs a repeat scoring performance from forward Miller Cop and one of Parker Stewart, Rob Finnessy or Tamar Bates to step up in the clutch. Our bigs are going to have to just play them. You know, I mean, I I thought he had his way and, you know, he was very boisterous about it and did you know he just he came in and had a a monster game and you know you're not gonna beat that team if you don't slow him down pressure is a privilege so it's a privilege to be put in this situation and maybe it's not always a good thing but um 
a lot of people wish they were in this position. Um, even though we're fighting on the bubble of the NCAA tournament, we're still here and we have pressure to perform. It's win or go home for the Hoosiers as they need to go on a run in the Big Ten tournament to boost their stock before Selection Sunday. IU tips off Thursday against Michigan at 11.30 a.m. For IOS TV Sports, I'm Evan Kamiko. Follow along with Evan Kamiko and Jeff McCoskey for live updates from Indianapolis this weekend. Both men's and women's diving teams competed in the Zone C Diving Championships this week, and multiple Hoosiers punched their tickets to the NCAA Championship meet. For the men's team, Quinn Henninger, Andrew Capobianco, and Carson Tyler all qualified for both the 1-meter and 3-meter dives. The women also had three qualifiers in the 1-meter and 3-meter with Christian Hayden, Ann Fowler, and Taryn Gilliland moving on to compete for a title. Hayden and Gilliland also qualified for the platform dive, which was the event Gilliland won at the Big Ten Championships. The women's NCAA Championships will be held March 16th through the 19th, and the men's NCAA Championships will be March 23rd to the 26th. The Indiana baseball team traveled to Springfield, Missouri to take on the Missouri State Bears in a three-game set this past weekend. Indiana got off to a hot start early, but pitching faltered down the stretch, ultimately falling 9-7 in the series opener. Indiana would bounce back in a big way on Saturday, scoring 12 runs in a victorious effort. Matthew Ellis knocked in seven runs himself in the win. The Hoosiers wrapped up the weekend in style, defeating Missouri State 10-4 and securing their first series victory of the 2022 campaign. Ellis continued his hot streak of form at the plate, knocking in three more runs. The Hoosiers would continue their momentum into the midweek clash with the Cincinnati Bearcats, blanking UC 7-0 behind a dominant showing from the pitching staff. The Hoosier arms combined for 14 strikeouts while allowing zero walks, and the Hoosier offense was patient in the win. Indiana continued their winning ways on Wednesday night, taking down the winless Purdue Fort Wayne Mastodons. The win makes 5-6 for the Hoosiers as Indiana will head to Troy, Alabama for a three-game set this weekend. Indiana softball dominated their home opener last weekend in the Hoosier Classic. Team 49 faced off against the Western Illinois Leathernecks and the Valparaiso Beacons. Our Ryan Costello has more. Indiana softball continued its season this past weekend at the Hoosier Classic here in Bloomington and finished with a record of 4-0. The Hoosiers beat both the Valparaiso Beacons and the Western Illinois Leathernecks twice. Coach Sean DeSantin talked about how the defensive intensity of her team showed out this past weekend. Uh, we look on the weekend as a whole, I'll take an ERA, a, a sub one and a half, uh, fielding percentage plus 980 club, uh, stealing 15 bases, um, Cora Bassett. The Hooters stayed aggressive in the batter's box. This was led by redshirt sophomore Cora Bassett. I don't really ever think about like hitting a home run like when I'm at the play. It's more of just like I'm just trying to get barrel and if it happens, it happens. Like it's awesome. But most of them I'm just thinking barrel. Uh, what can I do to get on for my team? The pitching staff stepped up for the Hoosiers in a big way with freshman Brianna Copeland leading the way. Copeland had 11 total strikeouts and only allowed one earned run in 11 innings of work on the weekend. I am such a Brie Copeland fan. Like she is one of like my best friends on this team. She is just seeing her growth from the fall to now is literally just amazing. I can't wait to see her like for the next three years. The Hoosiers will travel to Louisville next weekend and play against the host Cardinals, Central Michigan, Ohio, and Eastern Kentucky. For everything IU softball, follow along with us on Twitter and Instagram. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Ryan Costello. The Hoosiers will be back in action this weekend in Louisville for the Bluegrass Challenge. Make sure to follow Ryan Costello, Samantha Condra, and Chloe Whitman for all softball updates. Coming up after the break, the wrestling team competed in the Big Ten Tournament. And we have the latest on water polo, tennis, and more. You're watching Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Indiana Water Polo traveled to Cambridge, Massachusetts on March 5th and 6th for the Harvard Invite. Our water polo beat reporter Lauren Boer has more. Indiana Water Polo headed east for their last tournament of the season. They played four games in the Harvard Invitational. In their first contest of Saturday's doubleheader, number 14 Indiana faced off against the home team, number 20 Harvard. The Hoosiers were down most of the game, but their offense came to life in the closing minutes. 
IU's captains Izzy Mandema and Zoe Crouch scored two fourth-quarter goals to force overtime. Indiana went on to score three unanswered goals to secure a 12-9 win against the Crimson. In the second matchup of the day, IU played number 15 Wagner. The score was neck and neck through three quarters. Near the end of regulation, the Hoosiers were left without their explosive senior attacker, Tina Doherty, as she exited the game with three exclusions. Zoe Crouch's last-ditch effort in a buzzer-beating shot didn't reach the back of the net, and Indiana fell 7-6. to six. Anytime you're holding a team to seven goals, you've done a good job, especially a good team. Um, they have they have some major weapons, and well, like our defense was good. We were, just, we were unable to execute our scoring opportunities. Um, really throughout the whole game, but especially late in the game, we had we had chances to to tie it up and to put the game away, and we didn't do it. I think we were we were two for four on penalties, which that alone um, is the game right there. So that's frustrating. Um, you know, we did a really good job holding them to seven, but us only scoring six makes it hard to win. Sunday's matchup featured a dominating twelve to five victory against California Lutheran. Izzy Mandema led the Hoosiers with four goals. The last game featured a matchup versus number 23 Brown. Indiana led the entire time. They capitalized on penalty shots and power plays while six players were in scoring figures. The final score was IU 9, Brown 6. Indiana closed out the weekend with three wins and one loss. This performance is arguably the best four-game stretch from IU all season as they secured victories against two top 25 opponents and the third best team in Division 3. Indiana sits at 10 and 9 on the season. They now move into conference play heading to number 3 USC on Saturday, March 12th. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Lauren Boer. The water polo team will now embark on a tough 9-game stretch to close out the regular season. See how the Hoosiers fare by following IUS TV Sports on social media for all game updates. The Indiana wrestling team competed in the Big 10 tournament last weekend, capping off a tough 2022 season. Four Hoosier wrestlers battled through session three of the tournament, with graduate student Brock Hudkins finishing 10th in the 133-pound weight class and securing an automatic bid for the NCAA championships. Redshirt sophomore DJ Washington became the only other Hoosier wrestler to represent Indiana for the college championships, despite a winless record on the day. After several close matches, Indiana placed 14th at, the big, at big tens with a final team score of four points. Hudkins and Washington now have two weeks to prepare for the biggest tournament in college wrestling. Follow along with Riley Woodall and IUS TV Sports for all the latest NCAA meet updates. The Indiana men's tennis team played in two matches this past week, defeating Illinois State last Friday but following the 25-ranked Auburn on Monday. Our Blake Spillers has the recap. The Indiana men's tennis team had two matches this past week. First, Friday at home, they won against Illinois State. And then this past Monday, they traveled to Auburn to take on the Tigers. On Friday, the Hoosiers got out to the early lead as the doubles pair of Fletchel and Tereszpolski won 6-1. And then to clinch the doubles point, the pair of Andre and Vukovic won their match 6-1. This momentum carried over to the singles matches as we saw the Hoosiers dominate all day. Senior Patrick Fletchel won the first singles match of the day 6-1, 6-2. And then after that, both Carson Haskins and Vikash Singh won their matches to clinch the win for the Hoosiers 4-0. After the match, Coach Wortman talked about the importance of getting out to early leads in these matches. Yeah, I, th I think we, we talk a lot about during our, our practices and during the season about setting the tone, especially when they're in our building. And we want to be aggressive and we want to... Uh, play with energy and we want to kind of be connecting and, and really making a tough place for the other team to play. So you know, we really should be up breaks against the teams that we're playing and, and, and winning sets, um, first sets. And then, you know, then it might, they might get a little bit more comfortable, but we don't want to make them too comfortable early on um, in the sets. And, and I thought we did a great job of that. So hopefully that can give us some confidence uh, moving on. On Monday, IU ran into a very good team when they traveled to take on number 25 Auburn, losing 0-7. The Hoosiers battled with Auburn all day, but to start, the Tigers won the doubles point to go up 1-0. In singles, even though the Hoosiers didn't win any matches, they played a lot of good sets, with Carson Haskins, Luka Vukovic, and Michael Andre all forcing a third set in their matches. The Hoosiers have a little bit of time off before they travel to take on South Florida on March 16th. Follow along on Twitter with myself and Kara Adams for all of the updates. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Blake Spillers. The Hoosiers will look to bounce back from the Auburn loss next Wednesday as they head to South Florida to take on the Bulls. 
The IU women's tennis team had another doubleheader last Saturday. The Hoosiers fell short to Cincinnati 4-3, but swept Eastern Illinois 7-0. Our Lionel Smelianski has the recap. It was an up-and-down day of tennis for the Indiana Hoosiers as they suffered a heartbreaking defeat to the hands of University of Cincinnati in the first match of today's doubleheader. The match against Cincinnati came down to Mila Mach's match. She won the first set, and everyone came to watch her match. Unfortunately, she lost a set to tiebreak, and then the match fell out of her hands in the third set, and unfortunately, she could not get it done for the Hoosiers, who once again suffered a heartbreaking loss in the first match. You know, I'm just uh, proud of uh, any time any of our student athletes, you know, compete, any time they just give it all and fight until the very end. It's, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough when they, when they lose, but it's like a win. And actually one of, the, one of her teammates just, uh, just said to her exactly the same thing. He's just, you know, it's tough, but uh, very proud of when, when we compete our hearts out and see, you know, what happens. And unfortunately, the ball didn't go our way, and, uh, but very proud of the, her and the way that the team is just performing. However, they went into the locker room and Coach Romero gave them an inspirational speech and they came out firing on all cylinders against Eastern Illinois in the second match of the day. The Hoosiers did not drop a single set against Eastern Illinois, which is a feat that is almost impossible to achieve. And that is it for this season for the non-conference play. The next match will begin their Big Ten play. You know, the Big Ten conference is just a very tough tough conference and I think we're looking forward to it. I just think we need to be a little bit mentally tougher and I think that's uh, obviously on me. I'm going to keep working on trying to get them ready to to play good teams because we don't have any any bad teams coming up and playing on our schedule so we got to be ready to go. For iOS TV Sports, I'm Lionel Smolanski. The Hoosiers will travel up to Michigan this weekend to start their Big Ten season. They will face Michigan and Michigan State on Saturday and Sunday. The women's golf team finished 14th place at the Vista Gators Invitational Tournament in Gainesville, Florida. The team had their best showing on Sunday, shooting a 9.03 for the weekend. Freshman Ayn Donegan led the Hoosiers with a tournament score of 217 overall. Donegan finished in a tie for 22nd place and she has finished in the top 25 in all five tournaments of her collegiate career. She was followed by junior Valerie Clancy, who shot a 228. The Hoosiers will next play at the Briars Creek Invitational on March 14th through the 15th in Johns Island, South Carolina. The men's ice hockey team is headed to the Division II ACHA National Tournament for the first time in 14 years next week. This achievement did not come easy for the Hoosiers as they dealt with coaching staff changes mid-season and added 15 rookies to the roster. Our Kelsey Dennehy took a trip to practice to talk to some of the players about the team's growth this season. For any team, going to the national tournament is a thrilling accomplishment. But for this Indiana hockey team, it means just a bit more. Coming off of a canceled season due to COVID, the Hoosiers were expected to enter what is known as a rebuilding year with a brand new coaching staff and the addition of 15 rookies. And rebuild they did, as they went on to win the TSCHL Conference, the Regional Tournament, and are headed to Nationals next week. The whole team had to buy in for this to happen, including the newest additions. And the upperclassmen's hard work doesn't go unnoticed by the rookies either, because without them, the team couldn't have meshed as well as it has. Those are the guys that are, were the backbone of the program. They were here through COVID. They were here when the team wasn't having the success, and they know the hard work that goes into each season. Indiana also had to overcome some staffing changes throughout October when head coach Andrew Weiss took over. Although, according to the guys, it seems as though he was the guy to bring out the best in them. These guys are the definition of a team, and when asked what makes them so special, their confidence in each other and in their abilities was unanimous. I think just the pride, I think you know, everything starts in practice, and that's sort of translated into games, you know. I think, I think we're one of the hardest working teams, especially when it comes to practice. Coming into the final games of their season, the Hoosiers are ready to work their hardest together one final time to seal the deal. It's very important for us to take advantage of every single game like it's your last. Indiana men's hockey will face Northeastern Huskies in St. Louis, Missouri for their first game of the tournament. Follow along at hockey underscore IU and at IUSTV Sports for all of the updates. That's our show for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV Sports. For production crew behind us, I'm Christian Oates. And I'm Lauren Boer. We'll see you next time.